In a similar fashion, women have been conditioned to be submissive. American University's Women in Politics Institute reminds that 67% of women require an invitation to step into a leadership role to run for public office. They require an invitation. Will you join me for dinner? Would you like to go to a movie? Will you dance with me? Will you marry me? Women have been conditioned over history to wait to be invited to step forward. When women stand up, and they take an action, a leadership action, standing up, speaking up, leading something. It activates the mirror neurons in all women. We look at her and we say, you look like me, you sound like me. We share the same values. If you can lead, so can I. How do mirror neurons work? Think of a smile and a song. Smile. And the world smiles with you all day long. It's true. When I smile, you smile. When you smile, I smile. I could be talking to Ann Cooper, who's standing over in the corner, and you could be watching us across the room. We might be smiling and hugging and laughing. You would smile. That's the reflection. That's mirror neurons. So imagine this big, bold idea to take money, let's say the $20 bill, and let's imagine that we would place the images of powerful women, like here, the image of Eleanor Roosevelt on a $20 bill, with statements, powerful statements, like be authentic and go lead something. Lead with courage. Be powerful. Imagine how that might help mobilize the women of the world, because today, our civilization is calling, Mother Nature is calling to us. It's calling upon the women and the female brain to step into leadership roles at all levels of society because the world has grown too complex, too volatile, too interconnected to require anything less than the complex female brain. In today's idea economy, also known as a thank you economy and a service economy, it is the female trait of socially networked mind, the empathetic mind, the diplomatic brain that are, are the most likely to succeed in the idea economy, the thinking economy, and service economy. Our socially networked mind finds it easy to collaborate as women, to collaborate and cooperate with others. We have a profound love of community and people. Our empathetic brain intuits the unmet, unspoken needs of others. And our constant nurturing and touching creates the bonding that's needed to unite the community. And what about our diplomatic brain? Does fight or flight apply to women? In general, women step toward danger to diffuse conflict. They don't run from it. Why? The plight of our Stone Age mothers has the answer. Imagine being a 20-year-old Stone Age mother, a baby at your breast, a baby in the belly, children at your feet, and danger approaches. You cannot run from that danger. You have to develop a different set of strategies. Today, we call that diplomacy. Could the fastest way to transform the women of the world be to mobilize the women of the world? I believe the answer is yes. When women express their full potential, civilization will jump to a higher level. I think His Holiness the Dalai Lama agrees when he says, I would be pleased if my successor was female. And he adds, she may do a better job than the male contenders. Thank you so much.